Simple Cyber Defense, weekly updates for October 17th, 2021. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. In this episode, we're going to be talking about skimmers, how to spot them, what they are, and everything involving them. So, my name is Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And we're going to get started with the skimmers. And we're going to start off by talking about what they are. So basically skimmers are these little small devices that are put into card readers that as you put your card in to make a payment, it scans your card and copies your credit card number onto it. And usually those are placed before the reader of the actual device in there. So the machine will work perfectly exactly as it's supposed to and you'll get charged exactly as you're expected but the problem is the attacker now has your credit card number and they can use that whenever they feel like it and purchase whatever they want to because they have all the information from that skin that they need in order to make the purchases and is there anything else you want to add to that before just a, a quick question so okay. uh, there has to be physical contact between your card and the skimmer or can it be wireless? It has to, in order for the reader to work, it has to have the physical contact unless you're using like a, the wireless tap charges with near field, near field communication, which could be used remotely. See, and the near, near field communication or NFC for short, is a technology that's recent recent when there's years that's used to do contactless payments so what you do instead of having your card and swiping it or putting the chip into a reader what you do is you just tap your card onto the reader and then there's a a quick exchange between the reader and the card you know that gives the the attacker like a quick second in order to get that token and think of the token as kind of like a like a, a physical like a physical quarter, like a quarter or something but it's only specifically for you it identifies your card with that reader so that someone else just can't come behind you and use another card with a different token to make purchases on your card so, but if the attacker is able to capture that token, they have a split second in order to use that token. It's only validated within a small time frame. So each time you tap, it creates a different token. So that kind of prevents the attacker from, from copying your token and then using that same token like two months down the road. But it is possible if they are quick enough to capture the token and use it right away. It's extremely hard and not very common, but it is possible. So it is another thing you have to be mindful of is if someone is close enough, they could capture that quick interaction between you and the terminal and make a quick purchase without you even noting, noticing it. And with that Neil Field communication, they could also have a little device in their pants or wherever, and they could bump into you and also steal your credit card number using the same kind of method. But instead of making a purchase, they just steal your credit card number. So it's always a good idea if you have any wallets to have a RFID blocking capabilities with that that prevent them from using these devices and just bumping into you and stealing your credit card through the near field communication 
So I don't know if that answers your question or yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's very sophisticated, but these devices are very cheap and easy to buy on like eBay and elsewhere. Because unfortunately, it's not illegal to have the skimmers or even sell them. It's only illegal for you to use them, which kind of doesn't make sense because if someone has it, most likely they're having it in order to use it. So are there any other are there any legal uses for skimmers? Um, well, basically the skimmer is just basically the same thing that the credit card reader on a business uses for. So obviously there are legal uses for it, but because most likely these people are buying these skimming devices for illegal purposes, I would say the only legal way to use it is if you own a business and are using it to uh, charge people money for goods that they buy. Okay. So, uh, skim so but then would it still be called a skimmer? Or, or, it or would be called a skimmer. A skimmer okay. was usually given <clears throat> a, a name given to these e e like these little devices that the attackers illegally use it for. So okay. all it is is just a credit card reader, basically. Okay. Okay. But they called it a skimmer because most likely nine times out of ten they put the reader in front of the legitimate reader and right. skim your card for illegal purposes. Because your card right. gets swiped twice or scanned twice. And... Okay. So now you, you had mentioned uh, uh, two things. You mentioned uh, NFC and RFID. Mm -hmm. um, are the, what is the difference between these two things? Okay, so an RFID chip is a chip that sends out a radio signal for a scanner to pick up and it receives certain information. Uh, Neofield communication is just basically the method of the RFID chip transmitting data to the receiver. And there has to be a close proximity between the two so that it is harder to for an attacker to come up to it and steal that information as it's being transmitted over the air. Because kind of like with Wi-Fi, which has a long radius of transmission it's easier for an attacker to just pick up the wi-fi signals over the air because there's like this huge amount of distance between the transmitter and the receiver but with near field communication it's almost like you have to be right close to almost touching each other in order to get that transmission to send signals back and forth okay Okay, so um, RFID, uh, that's like the chip that is in your cat or your dog, right? Yeah, uh, same concept. Same so concept. they put this chip inside your credit card. Okay. Now, um, if, as just some may know, the RFID can either be powered, right? If it has mm -hmm. a small battery to it, like that connects power, uh, yeah. power to it, but most of them don't have because they don't have it because they're too small. Yeah, and so it gets powered from the receiver. From so the, the receiver re will send a little bit of electricity to the to the card, which powers the chip, and then the chip then sends the signal to the receiver. Okay. Now, for RFID encryption in that connection, connection is optional, but for mm -hmm. NFC, it's always encrypted, right? Because Correct. it's the financial... Yeah. Uh, and now you had mentioned that the someone we have that that second that split second to get that information that's transmitted mm -hmm. between the card and the receiver at that time. 
when does that information get encrypted? Is it after the receiver and when it goes to the it's server? It's after the token has been created. So once the token's created, then the the uh, encryption happens. So then okay. all the data is encrypted and then sent out to the payment uh, server and then processed over there. Okay. And this, and this kind of explains why, you know, uh, you'll see like Apple and Google and other companies trying to get you to use their products as far as like Apple mm -hmm. Pay or Samsung Pay or Google Pay because they work now as a third party, which is a tokenization server, yeah. right? And they get some of those, you know, a cut of that sale, right? Like a processing yeah. fee or whatever. So <clears throat> once, so like once the, uh, the, the seller or the merchant who works with a specific payment processing company, if you're just using a regular card, that information automatically from your card goes your credit card number your expiration date your name your zip code and mm -hmm. the number portion of your address goes to the payment processing company they process your card right and it comes back and that's when they do a patch at the end of the day mm -hmm. then they you know you get paid but when you're using something you, you nfc like whether on your phone you know using apple pay or using the uh uh, Samsung the, Pay, Google the Samsung, Pay, right? Or using your card? There's now there's a third party, which is a, that tokenization server, which completely changes your your credit card. All the information is being transmitted to the payment processor, yeah. right? So that adds another layer of security, mm -hmm. right? Um, because what, what I'm trying to what I'm what I'm trying to understand here, here is what is more secure if I physically insert a card. To process my payment, or if I use NFC, in in both in both, which would which one is easily skimmable, and which one is more secure as far as the the data in transit? The easiest for them to steal your information would be through either the scanning or putting in your car. It's a little bit more difficult to do the near through communication, except they have that split second in order to not only copy the token, but then use it at the same time. And okay. plus, they would have to have the exact same, they have to spoof not only your device, but also the reader too, because the reader has to have the same signature as what you're using. So you can't use a secondary reader with the same token, because then it'll be invalidated. Okay. And using your phone, everything is encrypted the entire process is encrypted, but as an additional layer on top of it so in order for that attacker to be able to use that information they'd have to inject your phone with malware mm. which is a a different level of attack which is again a little bit more difficult than just bumping into someone and and uh, using the NFC to steal your credit card number. So each of them have their pluses and minus, but the most secure I would say is your phone because the tap in there isn't going to work because a lot of these phones, especially with Apple, you have to do an additional thing in order to, to transmit, like either put your fingerprint reader on or look at the phone, say, okay, not only do you have your phone, but you also have your biometrics to confirm that this is you. Whereas just a card, well, a card dumb, it doesn't really know what, whether you're tapping a cash register or someone has a reader in their pocket and bumps into it. Right. So let's say the most secure method is your phone for right now, until they come up with another technology, which is more secure. But until then, I would say your phone is the most secure method of payment in this way right. which is counterintuitive because you ask yeah. you know people out there hey use your phone oh, is this secure is it safe well you know yes yeah. it is <laughs> it is secure but it's not always the most private way because now not only does the credit card information the credit card company knows what you're purchasing but also the cell phone knows right. all the purchases that you're making which could be apple also has a copy of that google has a copy right. of that and who else who knows also has that copy but Again, it is the most secure, 
but again that was private so if you're looking for privacy use cash, use cash. <laughs> <laughs> don't use a card at all or a phone at all just use cash but if you're looking for the most secure use your phone if you can okay. i know not everyone has a phone that can be used with this tapping because I, I my phone doesn't have a new field communication chip in it so i can't use these mobile payments to do the tapping on that it just won't work so i don't have that near field communication at all okay. but pluses and minus everything i guess okay so now since most people still use the actual you know swipe method of your mm -hmm. paying if, when they're using their credit card how can someone protect themselves from uh you know card skimmers how would i know if some someone is using a, a skimmer Unfortunately, if they're really good at what they're doing, it's not possible to know just by looking at it. The only way that you'll know you from a victim is after you skim it and they use your car. So I know there was one time that I had to get cash really fast. And I had to go to an ATM and I put my card in, got the cash, everything was fine. But then later that day, I got a call from my bank saying, hey, did you get a purchase, made a purchase from this website here? And I was like, no, I didn't at all. Well, it turns out that that attacker had a skimmer on the ATM. And as I put my card in, he stole the card information and then used it to make a purchase online. So luckily my bank caught it. It's like, hey, this isn't right because it was a very large purchase. And they were able to block it before they were able to get the money processed through. So that was a good thing, but it could have been very bad if I wasn't, if I didn't get that alert from my bank. Okay. One of the, uh, from, from what I know, one of the most popular places to use skimmers is on uh, gas pumps. And yeah. I know here in California and I, I, in some other states it's different, but you have to prepay or you insert your card mm -hmm. in the machine before you, you start to pump uh, your gas. And that's where that's where the, put the skimmers is right on the okay. uh, on the card readers. Uh, one of the things that I made a habit of is when I pull up to, to a pump, I try to look at all the pumps and see if the one I'm using looks a little bit different. Yeah. You know, if if the if the card reader is sticking out a little bit further, even by a, you know half an inch, because yeah, sure. it has that's how it works. Um, another another thing is, you know, if if the um, you'll see some of the uh, credit card machines they have a flat surface or an irregular surface, so that it's hard to install a skimmer on it. If if it sticks out, try to wiggle it, see if you can take it, it off. You know? And if if you can't, you know, if if you can't remove it and it's not easily removable then you're probably safe you know but if it if it moves it well you know or here's the thing about the gas pump thing <laughs> those keys that they use in those things are are um, uniform every gas pump uses the same key and those keys are available online to be purchased so a lot of these people, what they would do is they would buy one of these keys, open up the pump, put the skimmer inside wow. so that everything looks exactly legitimate, and then wow. close it back up and lock it. For these pumps, what you would need to do is look to see if there's like a sticker. Because some of these major pump companies will put a sticker on there and if it's broken or looks like it's a little worn down don't use it also try to get pumps that are closest to the clerk because they don't want to be noticed because it's very easy to be spotted if someone's opening up the pump and they're like hey wait a minute i'm only supposed to be able to do that and mm -hmm. then they'll get caught so what they'll do is they'll go to the pump that's way out there that the clerk isn't really paying attention to because it's real easy just to look over okay the pump close to me is fine 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 but that one in the corner over there will require him to actually look there but he's busy inside doing the other things so 
try to go to the pump closest to the clerk and if you can try to pay inside because mm -hmm. it's a little bit more difficult to get the clerk to be in on it too so i know it the convenience is to pay at the pump but yeah Sometimes you you give up a little security for a little bit of convenience. So those are my suggestions to you. Um, also, another thing you could do is just try try to see if you can wiggle the door, because sometimes these people are in such a rush that they forget to lock it back up. So if you can just push it open, most likely it's been tampered with. Like I said, yeah. look for stickers on there. See if you can just open the door just by tapping it real quickly. And if you can, just pay inside because that's going to be your best bet. Hmm. See, I always thought those stickers, and thank you for teaching me this. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought those stickers were more to kind of keep the gas station honest on the, the weights and measures. You know, like, hey, if, are you really getting a gallon when you're pumping a gallon? I didn't know it was about the... Uh, well, um, usually those stickers payment. are on the side where the door will open up. But if you get the stickers for the weight and stuff, usually those are on the face of the the okay. door. But okay. usually where the crack is, where you can open it up and close, usually mm -hmm. there's like a sticker there to say, okay, this hasn't been tampered with. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Yeah. All right. And again, another target besides the gas pumps are also ATMs and luckily the ATMs don't have a universal key that they can do yeah but what imagine. they can do yeah <laughs> imagine that um but what they do is they do look at the reader and they will copy that reader exactly so you won't know notice by just visually looking at it, and then put that reader above the bank's reader. So what I usually do when I go to an ATM is, first, if it's not a bank ATM, I usually don't use them because you always see them in like a a gas station or some right. weird alley somewhere where there's an ATM just sitting there, because unfortunately people can buy ATMs out there, right. and they can put them wherever they want. And right. So, if you do go up to a bank one, a legitimate one, what I usually do is go up to the card reader and just turn the little reader around and see if you can remove the reader. Because a lot of these attackers, they just put it on there real quick. So they only have like, they don't have a lot of time to sit there to secure it at all. So what they'll do is they'll take their cloned reader and just pop it on top of the bank's reader and walk away. And then come back a little bit later and then just pop it off and walk away with it. So you can just go in there and just put your hand on the reader. And if you can just pull it right off, it's a skimmer. If you can't, it's the bank's, the bank's actual reader. So just a couple seconds of jiggling on that thing to see if you can take it off will be the difference between having your card skimmed and not skimmed. And just don't now, when, use when, the ATMs. <laughs> can, can a card skimmer also read your PIN number? Um, no, but what they could do is put a tiny camera just above the keypad and record what you're typing in. Okay. So, again, usually what I do is I'll get my hand and put it just above the, the keys so that only I can know what I'm typing in. Because these days cameras are so small that you can just put them anywhere and be able to right. record anything. So it's kind of scary out there. Right. Any other questions? <laughs> I don't have any. I think uh, I don't think we got anything else to add to this. 
I no, I think that. that's that should be should wrap up. Just be very ca cautious when you're using your card out there. Um, the best practices is just be aware of your surroundings. So right. Um, a lot of these card readers are easy to spot just by doing a few seconds of just manually shaking things around or comparing different readers. Usually the higher the traffic is, the less likely the readers are because it's easier to be spot if a lot of people are walking around an area to see someone just putting something on there, or opening something up. So, like I said, just be aware of what you're doing and keep an eye on your credit card statements and bank statements because this holiday season we're going to be using our cards a lot. Um, I think because of the pandemic, we're going to do less physical shopping and more online shopping. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be safe because you could be going to a gas station and you can get your card skimmed or going to an ATM because you need money quickly and get your card skimmed. So just be a little bit more diligent to take a little bit more time to inspect the reader just to make sure that nothing doesn't look kind of out of place. And if it does, just don't use it. And wherever you can, use cash because you can't skim cash. Right. So with that in mind, let's conclude this episode and we'll hopefully have educated you in the world of skimming and just hope that you shop safe and we'll see you in the next episode. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.